Hey guys, welcome to another video. This is going to be the Unit 2 review uh, by CR Calculus. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, I will leave the link in the description if you want to download this PDF digitally. You can do so, it's free of charge, although he has a lot more content than this, but it costs a little bit of money. So yeah, you can explore around, see what you like, download what you like, buy what you like. Um, so let's get started. The first question, evaluate the following limit over here. How do we do it? We expand the numerator, so limit h tends to 0, 9, plus 6h, plus h to the power of 2 minus 9, over h. Uh, 9 and minus 9 are going to go. Take h as a common factor. So 6 plus h to the power of, uh, sorry, h. over h so h and h are going to be removed and then if you replace h with zero you're only going to be left up with six now in number two they asked me to find an estimate for g prime of six average rate of change so g prime of six it is going to be uh, g of seven minus g of five literally the same exact equation of a slope rise over run over 7 minus 5. So g of 7 is basically equal to 5, and g of 5 is equal to 1, and 7 minus 5 is equal to 2, so 4 over 2, which is 2. Second, uh, third question, sorry. 2 square root of x plus x to the power of 3, they want me to find h prime of 1. So just rewrite h of x as 2 x to the power of half plus x to the power of 3. So now using power rule, 2 is going to be multiplied by 1 over 2, x to the power of minus 1 over 2, plus 3x to the power of 2. Uh, 2 and 2 are going to be crossed out, so x to the power of minus 1 over 2, which is essentially 1 over the square root of x, plus 3x to the power of 2. So h prime of 1, if you replace x with 1, you're going to get 1 plus 3, which is 4. Now, what is the slope of the line tangent to the graph k of x at x is equal to 5 if k of x is a product of two functions, which is our u times v? So k prime of x, in this case, it is going to be u prime v plus u v prime, which is going to be g prime of x, f of x, plus g of x, f prime of x. So k prime of 5. It is going to be g prime of 5, which is 4, multiplied by f of 5, which is going to be 2, plus g of 5, which is going to be 1, and f prime of 5. Now, if you look at, because this is a graph over here, look at this line over here. This line is basically an equation that resembles a lot y is equal to x, because if you notice over here, the slope of this line over here, the rise, uh, sorry, the rise over run. So with every single one box we go to the right, we're going one up. So in this case, the slope is basically equal to one. Therefore, f prime of five is still going to be equal to one since the slope of this line is equal to one. So f prime of five is going to be one. So 4 times 2 is going to be 8. 8 plus 1 is going to be 9. Now in number 5, they asked me a very similar question. It's literally the same exact question, but at x is equal to 2, given that this is a quotient function. So m prime of x is going to be g prime of x, f of x, minus g of x, f prime of x, over f of x, all of it to the power of 2. So m prime of 2, because they asked me for x is equal to 2, it is going to be g prime of 2, which is going to be negative 2, f of 2, which is going to be 1, minus g of 2, which is going to be 5, and f prime of 2, which is going to be... Now, now over here, very similarly, one step one step so the slope is also one but because the line 
looks like y is equal to negative x because you know that y is equal to x looks like this meanwhile y equals negative x looks like this so the slope over here on this line is going to be negative 1 so it is going to be negative 1 all of it over f of 2 all of it to the power of 2 so f of 2 is equal to 1 over here and 1 to the power of 2 is equal to 1 now calculating this negative 2 positive 5 it is going to be positive 3 all right over here f prime of 7 okay this is a very easy question uh if you look at f of x on the graph this is 7 all right and the function is not even going up or going down it's literally going straight whenever you have a straight function we call it a constant function so basically f of x is equal to 2 over here when x is between uh, 6 and 8 so a constant the derivative of any constant is basically 0 so f prime of x is equal to 0 for this interval whenever the function is constant so over here f prime of 7 is equal to 0 now uh, what value of c does limit as x density f of x exist but f of x is neither continuous or differentiable at x is equal to c. So you're basically finding a point where the limit does exist. However, it's not even continuous and it's not differentiable. Well, this is a the very simple question over here because if you look at x is equal to 1, for example, at x is equal to 1, you can see that the limit does exist when it's approaching 1, which is going to be 2. However, it's not continuous because... Uh, limit as x tends to two, uh, 1 minus and 1 plus is not equal to f of 1, which is the black dot over here. So it's not continuous, not differentiable. Now, if you try to apply the same exact thing for uh, limit as x tends to 3, when you're doing limit as x tends to 3, you are finding out that 3 minus is in fact equal to 3 plus, And it is also equal to f of 3. It is continuous, however, over here. So... We cannot choose this point because we want it to be neither continuous nor differentiable. This leaves us with the last stop, which is x is equal to 6, because there is a clear discontinuity over here. So we don't have differentiability and we don't have continuity. So what value of c over here? So we got c can be equals to 1 or c can be equal to 6. Um, oh, never mind. c cannot be equal to 6 because the limit does not exist. That means the value only is c is equal to 1. I forgot about that part. So anyway, c is equal to 1 because limit as x tends to 1 for f of x exists and its value is equal to 2. However, f of 2 is equal to 3, which is different than 2, the one that we calculated over here. So it's neither continuous nor differentiable. In number 8 over here, we got n of x is equal to 4 ln x plus 6x, find n prime of 2. So n prime of x, it is going to be 4 multiplied by 1 over x, which is the derivative rule for ln plus 6. So n prime of 2, it is going to be 4, 1 over 2 plus 6, which is going to be 2 plus 6, which is going to be 8. And now in number nine, they asked p of x is equal to 3x cosine x plus 2x, find p prime of zero. So p prime of x, first of all, you can notice over here that we got 3x and we got cosine x, which is going to be applying the product rule. So u prime v plus uv prime. So 3 cosine x plus 3x negative sine x plus the derivative of 2x is going to be 2. So p prime of zero it is going to be 3 plus 2 because sine 0 is going to be 0. So all of this is going to be 0. So 3 plus 2 is going to be equal to 5. Uh, find the values of a and b such that this piecewise function is differentiable at x is equal to 1. What is the sum of a and b? So in order for something to be differentiable, we have to, ha we have to make it continuous because differentiability implies continuity. So simply stating ax to the power of 2 plus 7 is equal to 2x plus b. Now, they told me that they want it to be on x is equal to 1. 
So replacing x is equal to 1 over here, um, we got a plus 7 equals 2 plus b. Now, they want me to find the sum of a and b, and they want me to find the values of a and b over here. So first of all, I have to get another equation because this is a system of two equations, which is going to be a minus b equals 2 minus 7, uh, which is going to be negative 5. So this is the first equation. The second equation, the differentiability part. The derivative of the first piece must be equal to the derivative of the second piece over here. So the second part, we say that 2ax is going to be equal to 2. So at x is equal to 1, we get 2a is equal to 2. Uh, first of all, let me clarify over here. The derivative of ax to the power of 2 plus 7 is 2ax. The 7 gets eliminated because it's a constant. And the, on the other side, the derivative of 2x plus b is simply 2 because b gets eliminated over here. So 2a is equal to 2, hence a is equal to 1. And if a is equal to 1, then b is definitely going to be equal to 4. Because using this formula over here, you're going to get b is equal to 4. Now the sum, a plus b, is going to be 1 plus 4, which is going to be 5. This is it for this video. Be sure to tune in for unit 3, uh, and then unit 4, and then unit 5. Thank you so much.